Hi, welcome back to the workshop for what is always an exciting time, the start of a brand new project. So without further ado, let's get down on the bench and see what it is. And it's this, the Firebird. About halfway through the 335 build, I was just musing in one of the videos about what I could build next. And I had several suggestions in the comments later, but a couple of people suggested that I build a Firebird. And as soon as they said it, I was like, yeah, that's it, of course. I've got several reasons for wanting to build one of these. I mean, firstly, Old Gibson Firebirds just aren't really a thing in the UK. I've never actually seen one in a shop. I've never actually picked one up. There are some reproductions that Gibson are doing these days and there are some other brands that do cheaper versions, but in terms of vintage ones, not really a thing here. And secondly, it's a very interesting construction, especially if you do it the way they used to do it in the old days. It's a neck through guitar. It's the first solid body neck through that Gibson ever did. And it's also a multi-laminate neck. So it's actually a nine piece laminate of mahogany and walnut. So that's gonna be a challenge in of itself. So another area of complication, as you can see here in this cross section of the body, is that the laminated center section is actually thicker than the wings of the guitar. And also the wings of the guitar body taper towards the edge as well. So again, there'll be some aspects to this part of the project which will be unfamiliar and might take a little bit of thinking through. And thirdly, I just feel it's a really iconic guitar and it'd be great just to have one in the collection. However, I am going to make a few changes to what's on this design and there will be a few bits that aren't kind of absolutely faithful to the original. And I'll go through some of the reasons for doing that. As shown on the drawing here, we've got the traditional style Gibson truss rod installed. I'm not gonna be doing that, mainly because the Gibson unit takes a lot of material out of this angled headstock which has always been a problem. It's always been a weak point, as anyone who's ever broken the headstock off a Gibson guitar will know. And in this day and age, I don't really see the need to be doing that. So instead, I'm gonna put a wheel adjuster type truss rod in, so the adjustment will be at the heel of the fretboard, so we won't have to go anywhere near the headstock for adjustment. And that means we can also keep all of that material there. Hopefully that will give us a much stronger headstock construction. Additional to that, I'm gonna do a scarf joint on the headstock, primarily because I've never done it before. So I just want to give that a try. That is gonna be very challenging, both in terms of it being a new technique to me, but also when we get into the construction of the neck blank, you'll see why potentially that could be fraught with disaster. This drawing showing a three pickup configuration. I'm not going with that. I'm gonna go with a two pickup configuration, mainly because I want to use the correct Firebird pickups on this. And the Firebird pickup isn't a mini humbucker. It is slightly different in construction and they're not that common. And as a result, they're expensive. So it's gonna be quite expensive to put the two pickups in. So three pickups for me is just kind of out of the question. I'm not gonna go there with that kind of outlay. The other main difference in my build goes back to that multi-laminate construction. So if we just get that part of the drawing in view, and it's this bit here, and as you can see, this is a nine piece laminate. And what we've got is a big piece of mahogany. Then there's a 1 16th of an inch thick bit of walnut. So that's about 1.5 millimeters. Then we've got a six millimeter bit of mahogany, another 1.5 of walnut, a nine millimeter center block of mahogany, and then the whole thing repeats. Now, I have got no way of cutting pieces of walnut 1.5 millimeters thick. I just simply can't do it. The other issue I have is that I haven't got a piece of walnut long enough to do that with. So that's a non-starter. So thinking a little bit outside the box, but in terms of what people are doing with modern guitar construction, it really isn't that much because we see people accent their multi-laminate necks with bits of veneer all the time. So what I'm gonna do is use veneer instead of those slices of walnut. And I've got some walnut veneer to do that with. Now I could have got some 1.5 millimeter constructional veneer in walnut to do that with, but because it's 1.5 millimeters thick, they can't roll it like they would a normal veneer. So the maximum length they could send it in on standard delivery was one meter. Now I need 1.1 meter, so that's not enough. I could have had it delivered in a 2.3 meter long length, but the delivery cost on that was astronomical. It was 
the same price as the veneer itself. I didn't really see that as an option either. Um, the other option was that I could have driven down and picked it up, but even then, I don't think I would have fitted it in my car. So I'm not gonna go with that. It's a detail. I think three layers of veneer glued together between these will be absolutely fine. It's probably gonna take all of the clamps I've got and more to do it, but as long as I can get good clamping pressure right the way along the length of the lamination, I don't see the fact that I'm using a lot of veneers in there will be a problem. But that, however, brings us back to the issue of the scarf joints. And the reason it could be a massive problem is obviously if I'm gonna be putting a scarf joint in around here, I've got to make sure that all these laminations line up properly, otherwise it's just going to look horrendous. So there's a real technical challenge there. I might need to have to investigate a way of actually pinning the two pieces of wood together whilst it's gluing so I can ensure that I'm as accurate as I can be in lining up these laminations. Okay, so in terms of material, I've got two great big pieces of sapili, so these are much, much longer than I actually need. So I think once that's all laminated up with the walnut, um, that will make a very, very nice centre block. For the two wings, I've got this piece of some sort of mahogany. It came to me second hand from a friend. And regular viewers might actually recognise this as the leftovers from the wood that I used on the Great Guitar Build Off 2021 build. So, can't let anything go to waste. Now, looking at the plans, I would need a bit of timber, 930 mil long, to get the two pieces for the wings of this guitar out of. This is 900 mil, so it's a little bit short, but it's wider than I need it, so I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to overlap the two and get the two pieces out of one bit of timber. If not, I have got another bit of wood that I can use. It's exactly the same as this, but I don't wanna use it if I don't have to, so we'll just go with what we've got here. And then, for the walnuts, this box I've got a two and a half meter length of walnut veneer it's half a millimeter thick and it's just over 600 mil wide so I've got more than enough veneer to do what I need to this came from as you can see the wood veneer hub not sponsored by them in any way shape or form I just find them a very very good online supplier for all my veneer needs it's just like anything on this channel. If I'm recommending it, it's because I've used it and I like it or I find it to be a good product or service. And that is definitely the case for the wood veneer hub. So that's the material sorted. The next stage, of course, is a set of templates. Okay, so as far as templates go, there are options. I could have bought a set of templates. Um, I know that Crimson do a set. Um, they were for a glue in neck and obviously that's not what we want. Possibly could have used them, but I didn't really look into it that deeply. What I'm going to do is what I always tend to do. I'm going to make a set of templates from these plans, which again gave me a couple of options. I could have bought two copies of this plan, glued one to a piece of board, cut everything I needed out from there. I always see that as a bit of a waste. So instead what I do is I take this roll of kind of thin tracing type paper. I bought this some time ago. I've made several sets of templates with this and you'll see me use it for masking and for covering surfaces and stuff. It's relatively cheap. It's dead handy to have around the workshop. And all I will do is I will fasten this down over the plan with some low tack masking tape. And then I will just trace out the lines for the appropriate bits that I need. Then glue those sheets of paper onto a board of MDF and then cut them out on the bandsaw before taking them to the final shape and dimensions with a variety of sanding methods.
so there we have an almost completed set of templates there's still a little bit of cleaning up to do but i'll do that off camera and then we can get back to this in the next episode where we will be preparing all the timber and getting everything ready for that mammoth glue up of the laminated neck block so let me know what you think of this choice of project in the comments. Um, if there's any experienced Firebird builders out there, let me know any pitfalls that you came across during your builds. And also don't forget to drop me a like if you enjoyed this episode. And if you're a first time viewer, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Bye bye.